thundering pulse is the 5 star bow from the Inazuma series. It has good base stats. Having a 608 base attack and a 66.2% critical damage substat, its passive operates similarly to the Misplitter Reforged with its emblem stacking mechanic. At 0 stacks, a character will receive a 20% attack bonus. When a character deals damage with their normal attacks, casts an elemental skill, or has their burst meter at less than 100%, they will gain one additional Thunder Emblem. At Refinement Rank 1, the passive will provide 20% attack and 40% normal attack damage at 3 stacks. Thundering Pulse's base stats are very good, but its passive can be restrictive as many bow characters aren't reliant on their normal attacks to deal damage. However, even though Thundering Pulse does have a more specialized passive, it does work well for the majority of bow characters who do use normal attacks, and its good base stats allow it to outperform a majority of bows. However, before we can get into its power on different character rotations, we need to talk about the overall weapon banner. For Genshin version 2.0, the 4 star weapons on the banner are pretty decent, with the exception of Range Slasher. Favonius weapons scale well with refinements, Sacrificial Fragments and Dragon's Bane are good weapons for Sucrose and Zhongling respectively, and refinements on Sacrificial Sword can be very impactful. However, Skyward Blade, Thundering Pulse's weapon companion on the weapon banner, is not a good weapon. While it can be used on units like Jean, Bennett, and Jing Cho, it is never the best in slot option for any of these characters, and there are even 4 star weapons that are competitive with it or straight up outperform it. Again, being able to buy Thundering Pulse using Fate Points requires missing Pulse on the weapon banner twice and pulling another 5 star weapon in its stead. It will take the typical player months to save up enough Primo Gems to roll for a specific 5 star weapon on average, and spending Primo Gems on the weapon banner prevents you from rolling on the character banner at all. It might seem tempting to roll for Thundering Pulse if you're planning on using a character who benefits greatly from it, but if players already have good weapon choices for that character and can clear the content they wish to clear, the weapon banner will typically not be worth the Primo Gem investment. This is especially true when considering that the good weapon in this case, being Thundering Pulse, is paired with a relatively lackluster weapon as its counterpart, in this case being the Skyward Blade, which is not particularly stellar. Now, let's talk about how good Thundering Pulse is. On bow characters who deal a large portion of their damage with normal attacks, this bow is their straight up best in slot choice. For example, on Yoimiya, the gap between Thundering Pulse and even the Skyward Harp is similar to the gap between the Staff of Homa and all other spears for Hu Tao, which is quite a lot. Even on characters who don't perform many normal attacks, Thundering Pulse is still a good bow. Its crit damage subset and 20% attack at refinement rank 1 are universally good and are competitive or best in slot options for many bow characters. While it may seem that its specialized passive makes the bow a good choice exclusively for normal attackers, this is actually not the case. Thundering Pulse is a very good bow for many bow users and competes with the Skyward Harp as the best in slot option. If players already have the Skyward Harp and aren't using a character who benefits especially from Thundering Pulse, which is only Yuanmiya at this moment, it's hard to recommend rolling for it. Now, let's talk about how Thundering Pulse performs on some specific characters. On Child, Thundering Pulse is slightly better than Skyward Harp. While it seems like its normal attack bonus should be extremely good for Child, who uses many normal attacks, in a typical child rotation, he should be vaporizing his burst, using charged attacks and causing a significant number of riptide slashes, none of which scale off of normal attack damage. In a multi-target scenario, only around 25% of child's damage actually comes from his normal attacks. While Thundering Pulse is still marginally better than Skyward Harp for most players, it's difficult to recommend the bow if players already have a Skyward Harp. On Yoimiya, Thundering Pulse easily beats out any of the other options for her best in slot choice. She is heavily reliant on normal attacks to deal damage, so Thundering Pulse will offer a bonus to a significant proportion of her damage. Thundering Pulse is so good on her that a refinement rank 1 Thundering Pulse can even beat out a refinement rank 5 Skyward Harp. 
However, even though Thundering Pulse is an extremely good bow in Uemiya, she does have another amazing option in the form of Rust, which is only a 4 star weapon. Rust has an unconditional normal attack damage bonus and is competitive with non Thundering Pulse 5 star options for Uemiya. If players are on the fence about rolling for Thundering Pulse for Uemiya, they should consider Rust as an option before rolling, especially if they have any pre existing refinements on it as a refinement rank 5 Rust is better than all other 5 star options at refinement rank 1, excluding Thundering Pulse by a wide margin. Most Genshin players are likely curious if Thundering Pulse is any good for a charge shot focused Ganyu. The short answer for this question will be no, as a highly refined prototype crescent will be better than this option with almost also beating it by a decent margin. However, Thundering Pulse does have a use case for Ganyu. In the popular Morgana team with Venti and Mona, Ganyu deals the majority of the damage with her burst due to the way that its targeting works when there are multiple grouped enemies inside her burst field. Because she deals more damage with her burst and thus comparatively less damage with her charged attacks, the value of almost bow is diminished in this team comp. Thundering Pulse and Skyward Harp are comparable on Ganyu in a Morgana team, with Thundering Pulse generally winning out due to the ease of getting too much crit rate on Ganyu when she uses the Skyward Harp. For Fischl, Thundering Pulse is both a good support and a good main DPS weapon choice. As a support, Thundering Pulse is Fischl's best in slot weapon as it slightly beats out the Skyward Harp. As a main DPS, Skyward Harp is better than Thundering Pulse in physical official builds because its passive deals physical damage. Thundering Pulse can win out in Electro builds if Oz uptime is maintained or in single target scenarios, as Skyward Harp's passive hits in an AoE. This is because Thundering Pulse only boosts normal attack damage and things like C6 Fischl attacks and Oz attacks while Fischl is not on the field are not considered normal attack damage. Given that Skyward Harp is either very close to Thundering Pulse or can straight up beat Thundering Pulse for Fischl, it's generally not recommended to pull for Thundering Pulse if players already have a Skyward Harp or if players have a highly refined Alley Hunter or Stringless options for a support Fischl. There's no doubt that Thundering Pulse is a good weapon. However, players should be aware that it's not for everyone. It's only the undisputed best bow by a wide margin for you and Mia, and even for her, a very good alternative exists in the form of Rust. There's also the issue of it being paired with Skyward Blade, which isn't a particularly good weapon at all. Players should be careful to consider whether they truly want Thundering Pulse before investing their Primo gems and rolling for it. Thanks for watching this video. For more content like this, check out some of our other videos on the Kuching Mains YouTube channel.